What is up? And welcome to the very first episode of This Week in Unreal Engine. My name is Matt Workman, and I am an Unreal Engine game developer. So naturally, I'm just kind of obsessed and, you know, eternally online, focusing on anything related to Epic Games, Unreal Engine, the news about this whole space. I'm very, very interested in it. So I wanted to make kind of like a weekly show roughly right now, trying to put it out, put it out on Fridays, where I just kind of recap things that I thought were interesting in the Unreal Engine space. So first on the agenda here, Epic Games, this is from the Unreal Engine Twitter. You'll notice that a lot of this is just from Twitter. Uh, they have updated the way that Epic Mega Grants work. And if you're not familiar with Epic Mega Grants, you basically apply to them online and you say, I've got this game I'm making or this like educational series or like a whatever, anything kind of like anything related to Unreal Engine, uh, you submit uh, a proposal to them and they give you money to go do it. Uh, I have been very fortunate enough to get uh, three of these for my projects. And so I'm very interested in this and, and what's changed. Uh, so the gist of this is that basically now uh, when you apply, there are like really kind of like defined like schedules and kind of like seasons like in Fortnite where like you submit within this window and you're going to find out by this window. So this is the tweet and here is the official website here. I'll, I'll link this in the description. And basically we have a much better timeline now showing like when you should apply, when you're going to find out. So that's really great. I also heard through the grapevine, I'm not going to leak anything. I'm going to try really hard not to. Um, that Maybe I shouldn't even say, but I, I heard that they kind of like, kind of flushed all the current Mega Grant like submissions and that they were kind of like redoing something. Uh, and so this was that. So overall, really great. Uh, I will definitely be applying. I have a couple new projects that I'll probably kind of slip into these videos as I make them. Um, so really great update to the Mega Grant system. Next, Unreal Fest 2024. I know this was like a while ago, it was in Seattle. I went to that and I was a speaker at it. And if you miss out on going to that, you can go to the Unreal Engine YouTube channel and watch all of the presentations or most of the presentations uh, on the YouTube channel that you'd be interested in. And this is my talk on making uh, apps in Unreal Engine 5. So it was really cool to be able to speak uh, at Unreal Fest and to meet everyone. And you know, the next one's in, I, I, not Disney World technically, but it's in Orlando. So that, that should be cool. I'm like, hopefully going to that. And I don't have like tickets booked or anything like that, but um, but that, that should be pretty cool. Next up in kind of like tangential to Unreal Engine is UEFN. I guess technically that's Unreal Engine, like Unreal Engine Fortnite. So never mind. That's legit uh, Unreal Engine there. Uh, Heather, who I met at Unreal Fest, is uh, looking to hire a UEFN verse creator evangelist. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it's cool to see that verse is... Uh, getting worked on and that they're continuing to hire roles to help people, I think, just like succeed and learn and get user feedback about Verse. However, I must say that as kind of kind of tangential to the UEFN community, I know a lot of them from being in the alpha, they are very vocal about what they like and mostly what they don't like uh, on Twitter. So, you know, getting feedback is, is should be pretty easy. But uh, this is the official posting here. And if you wanted to, you know, go down to the, the salary range here. I don't know. That's, I'm always just interested in, in what that is. It's different in California than Washington, I guess. That's, but it, I heard the job is remote. Anyway, uh, Epic Games, that's what they're, what they're paying. So to continue talking about jobs in like the Unreal Engine space, I must say that CD Projekt Red has the North America headquarters now that is in Boston, Massachusetts, which is where I happen to live. So I've been actually connecting with a lot of the people who work there in the new office on LinkedIn. And, you know, we're just staying in contact, just, just saying hi to everyone. Anyway, they continue to hire. They're hiring constantly. Uh, I must say that if if I was ever allowed to be part of this organization, I'd want to work in that kind of the mocap, like virtual production, you know, performance capture side of things. Uh, but their mocap volume, it's in Poland. I think that's where it is. It's in, it's in the Europe headquarters, so they don't have one in Boston. But anyway, if you're a senior level uh, Unreal Engine person, developer, at this high of a level, and I'm sure you've heard of the job. Anyway, anyway, they're they're hiring like constantly in Boston. And our final job opening or job related thing in the Unreal Engine space is for the Riot Games MMO, which I'm a huge MMO player. I'm super psyched about this. I know that they kind of like restarted the project I heard. Um, but anyway, if you kind of like dig through this, we see, oh yeah, familiarity with Unreal Engine and MMOs as a plus. Like amazing. The, I I I can't wait to play this. 
That also sounds awesome. So just kind of shouting out projects that are Unreal Engine. Okay, so we're kind of on a roll here. Things are like going pretty well, but I'm gonna bring it down a little bit to bring up this tweet that I put out here about when you open up Bridge in Unreal Engine 5.5, you get this kind of, uh, you get this. It's like a new home for mega scans and something about Fab and Quixel. And basically like you don't download stuff here anymore. I think they like kind of re-enabled it for a little bit. I, I'm a little lost with what's happening uh, with Fab and Quixel on the transition. I know it's just a growing pains thing, but you still have to go and bridge to download MetaHumans, which that's, I download a lot of MetaHumans. So I just put it out there, you know, this this won't age well, I'm sure by like Unreal Engine 6, this will be fixed. But, um, you know, I, I always get like a really bad feeling every time I, I open up like, let's go download a MetaHuman. It's like, oh, what is this? So anyway, I just put it out there, no big deal. But like, here here's in history at this t point in time, uh, Bridge, It's it makes me sad when I go there. I don't know, but I, I still love MetaHumans and mega scans and whatnot but anyway i this this is a sad sight to see for me next up is marvel rivals heard of that one it's pretty popular kind of killed my wow season because all the people i played wow with went to play marvel rivals but um that is made with unreal engine 5 and level 80 has this like kind of like omega tweet here uh talking about how they used the uh game ability system which i cannot parse that is a, that's a really dense system to use uh but they use that to you know get Marvel Rivals off the ground and you can like look at the Unreal Engine editor version of Marvel Rivals maps and see like their lumen and stuff. It's just really cool. And slightly, I haven't like dug through all the news yet about the Marvel Rivals uh, layoffs that like just, just happened. So I'm not going to really comment on that or anything like that. That's like way above anything that I work on anyway, but th that happened too. Moving on to some like strictly Fortnite stuff, but still, you know, very, very related to Unreal Engine and Epic Games is that I guess they're selling shoes. Now, I, it would be so much better for my career if I, like, no-lifed Fortnite instead of World of Warcraft, but I like World of Warcraft, so that's what I play. So I actually don't know that much about Fortnite and, like, the immediate news that's happening there, but the fact that they're selling shoes is pretty cool to me because I make Unreal Engine... Uh, uh, I make MetaHuman clothing, and I like making shoes, and it's cool that they're selling shoes. That's it. I like making skins, so here they are doing that. I'm sure there's way more nuanced takes on on what this means for like, you know, UGC and the creator economy, but I just think it's cool that they're making shoes and selling them. So next up is just a cool video I saw on Twitter. Again, a lot of this is just my Twitter stuff. That's where I see a lot of the news. And it looks to be uh, custom metahuman, custom clothing. And they just kind of do this like kind of interesting, like, I don't know, I'm just going to call it a TikTok edit because it's a vertical video, uh, cutting between her performance capture, the video of that, the behind the scenes, and then like different close-ups of it. She's wearing like a Rococo suit and has an iPhone. And you know, I love MetaHumans and mocap. I spent many years uh, kind of like working on that workflow myself. So I just thought this looked really cool. I've heard of this project. Um, you can go check it out here. I don't know that much about it, but anyway, if you want to see some MetaHumans in an actual game, uh, go check out uh, this account on Twitter. I, I just thought this video was really cool. So next up is one of my projects that I've been working on for like almost a year, not not quite a year yet, but uh, a project that I'm developing is called CamOp Simulator, which is a camera operating simulator. And something that's really cool here is that someone made an arcade version of it, and we've got wheels, and that, that kind of moves the camera around. And we, we worked on, uh, with the developer of the hardware wheels here, a mode that's kind of a competition. So... Different camera operators have to trace the BS and C here, which is, this is for the BSC Expo uh, in, in Europe. And then whoever gets the highest score is on the leaderboard. So they had this like kind of mini competition there. And that was really awesome. So it was cool to actually see like one of my first like kind of games actually being used uh, by people in the wild. I wish I could have gone, but luckily they filmed this video. So awesome to see that uh, for a Op simulator and uh, just like, you know, it's an Unreal Engine 5 game. So I, I put it in there. Moving on is a little ditty here, a little blueprint that uh, I put together. I was like really pleased with myself that I figured this out and I tweeted it and other people were like, oh, like nodes are cool. So here it is. Uh, it would need like a probably a video to actually explain it. But basically say you're like, you know, you have a game and you're like tracing around in the world and you're like, oh, cool. I want to snap this object. That's what I'm doing. I want to snap an object I'm holding to another object but on its local grid. So picture like, you know, a 3D grid and I point to it and it snaps on like its own local grid, right? Not world grid. So this is kind of the math for it here. 
Um, not even the math. It's like these are the nodes that do that. And these are concepts that uh, someone at Epic actually taught me a while back about inverse transform to go from world to local and then transform location to go back local to world. And then there's also a node called vector snap to grid. In case you want to just have that math done for you, I used to write that by hand. There's a node for it, always in Unreal Engine. Anyway, little blueprint snippet, not really a tutorial, but anyway, I, th I thought that was uh, cool enough to make like a little, little uh, tweet about. And uh, this is that mechanic in play for one of my new projects that I'm kind of prototyping. So if you look, you know, I'm moving an object here, I hold it, and it's snapping to that object's local grid. And I'm like lurping the movement too, so it's kind of smooth, like, like Fortnite style. Okay, and to wrap this up is ZBrush for iPad. This is not sponsored or anything like that. I don't even have this app yet. I have ZBrush for like PC, uh, one of like the legacy licenses that I don't have to pay the subscription yet. But... Uh, this caught my eye because I've, you know, I've always wanted to be able to hop on the iPad. I'm an iPad user. I have an iPad pencil. And, like, I've always wanted to be able to hop on there and, like, 3D model while I'm, like, on the couch and, like, you know, do it, like, kind of, like, lazy style. That's the thought. Um, and I'm not much of a sculptor, but I know that Z model is really good for, like, hard surface modeling. And to see that they, uh, have implemented, because, like, the first iPad, uh, ZBrush didn't have this. I know a lot of people were like, where's the Z modeler? Well, obviously... It's a little bit more work for them to get it to work like seamlessly with a pencil, the new like modern ZBrush UI. But this looks really compelling because I make a lot of hard surface models. So I don't know. I'm picturing being on the plane or like just on the couch, whatever. I just want to get off my computer and like still just keep working. But like, I just thought this would be cool to be able to like, you know, sculpt out a little bit of a mesh and then get in there and like actually do some pretty complicated poly modeling uh, on the iPad. I thought this was cool. And it's like a reminder for myself to like go download this and like actually actually try it. So that wraps it up for this week in Unreal Engine. It's kind of like me just going through like things that I found on Twitter and things that I've shared uh, having to do with the Unreal Engine space and things that are like immediately tangential to it. But um, I don't know. I'm kind of just interested in having more conversations about Unreal Engine uh, more than just on Twitter and like kind of private conversations I have with people just to kind of spread out you know, the news to other people that may not have heard of these things and to just widen the conversation about it. That wraps it up for this video and we'll see if I make another one next week. I am eternally online and so I'm even more online making these videos. I'll check you on the next video.